Siddhartha Kolsla, Emmy nominee for This Is Us and also the composer on Only Murders in the Building. Uh, Sid, I, I love both of these scores. I wanted to start with uh, Only Only Murders. It's a great mystery show with lots of twists and turns. I guess when you first like read the scripts and stuff, how did that inform you know how you thought the music should sound? Yeah, I mean, I've read that first script and um, and it was totally something that was you know up my alley in terms of like the wheelhouse that I like to sort of live in. It's 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 that perfect balance between comedy and drama. Um, there was a bunch of magical realism sort of like baked into the script. Um, and so I knew that there was going to be a lot of sort of like, this could be a lot of fun to actually score this. And um, I could be as sort of creative as, as I wanted to be. And, and I knew that John Hoffman, who created the show, um, was also going to be really open to sort of just something like fresh and original and different. And, um, and he let me sort of explore, which was great. Um, interestingly enough, when uh, when I got the, when I got, when I had that interview for the show, we were sort of like, we were like deep in the sort of like the early parts of the pandemic when everything was sort of shutting down. Um, and I had started writing my own modern classical record. Um, you know, it was just like all the production stopped and, you know, I didn't, I didn't train in any classical. Um, I, had, I, I come from the band world. Um, I was in a band, singer, songwriter of a band, um, like an indie alternative rock band. Um, uh, not very successful band, by the way. Um, but the uh, so for me, I was gonna I use this time to sort of start exploring ideas and and my own sort of interpretation of modern classical and thinking of like sort of people like uh, Philip Glass and um, and and then looking back to like people like Satie and and so there was just a lot of listening I was doing and writing and just for my for myself. And on my interview with uh, John Hoffman on a Zoom call, um, I played him like one of the pieces that I had just like written, like as I had read his script, because I was already in this world and he heard it and he was like, you have the job on the show. Um, <laughs> and, and so that was, uh, I'd never really done that before and that was exciting. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was just, it was just one of those, like it's, it's, it's been just like a magical experience working on that show. The theme is so incredibly catchy and excellent. I, I love it so much. And I, I it obviously you. you weave it through the whole score, but how did you come up with the, the theme for that? And like, I guess one of the things I was curious about too, is like the show is obviously like, you know, a true crime kind of spoofing and like relies on the audience's familiarity with true crime podcasts and all these different things. So, I mean, how like, yeah. I feel like your score evokes those kind of shows, but also it's so original. And I guess, how did you kind of like make, like blend it all together to get that, that main theme? Yeah, I, I think for me, I heard this melody and um, and it was it was just like this line that I had and um, and I ended up just sort of like I, I came up with just something that was just uh, fun for me. Like it was just and I, and it was no I had no idea that would actually end up being the theme um, and I played it for John. And basically it was like me hitting these like quarter note stabs really high on the piano, um, very much sort of inspired by my old band days of like, you know, of uh, Brian Wilson and uh, Donovan sort of inspired stuff, but very sort of 60s-esque, um, just this bouncy quarter note thing that I was doing. And I sang this melody over these changes. Um, and, um, and then John heard it and he was like, that's my show right there. And, and he said the score for that, that theme that I'd written made him feel um, equal parts um, sort of uh, comedic um, as it felt dramatic to him. It felt mysterious. Um, and he thought that it could really sort of help him in like the magical realism stuff that he wanted to explore in series. And he just loved that melody against the changes that I had. And um, the one thing he asked was, you know, the producers asked was, how do you make this more New York? You know, so like this show takes place in New York City um, in this um, pre-war building called the Arconia. And, um, you know, you have this entire, you have Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez, and all these other incredible actors, many of them theater actors, um, who sort of like live in this building. And, um, and the idea was, how do we bring about the majesty of this pre-war building and the history of it in the score, but also um, juxtapose it with something modern? Um, because, you know, New York 
is filled with all of these sort of like um, uh, this, this, these, these dichotomies of sort of like rich and poor, um, socioeconomic disparity, you know, you can go down one hallway in the Arconia and you can have somebody who lives in this building that's so wealthy um, and then somebody that's grandfathered into sort of like, you know, uh, a rent controlled situation that has been living there forever. Um, and then you can walk down the street and there can be somebody on the street corner just, you know, playing buckets um, um, to, to collect change. And that's when I said to John, I said, well, why don't we um, have um, Home Depot buckets on the main title? And my drummer, James uh, McAllister, who's fantastic and plays with Sufjan Stevens and the National and a bunch of bands that I love. Um, I asked him if he could just go get some Home Depot buckets and he did and he set up his drum kit with mics on the, all these buckets and just sort of and just played on the main title and it really was the thing that made it sort of like um, you know slap as some people have said to me is a new <laughs> word a new, a new word that I've learned. Yes uh, it does it does slap yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's I think it slaps because of James. I mean it's like when he added those drums in, it was like, so when you hear the, when the main title comes on, it prelapsed with that's him on Home Depot buckets. Wow. And it really was the thing that gelled it together. Um, and then that, as you said, yeah. that theme is something that I wove throughout series, but in a, in a much larger orchestral sort of way. Yeah, it's wonderful. I, last one on Only Murders and we'll get to This Is Us, but how much of your background as you said, like indie rock, and obviously you like, you like all those bands, but this is a classical score. How much is that, Influ like how much does your indie rock roots basically influence the class the way you think of classical music i think for me i'm very melody driven it's always been just like the way that i write it was the way i wrote songs in my band it's the way i write scores now like i read a script and um i hear melody right away it's sort of like i approach scripts like i'm writing i, I approach these shows like i'm um uh, you know like i'm i'm a songwriter as much as i'm a composer um and, and that helps me sort of think of things around theme and melody. Um, I'm a huge fan of, um, of, of, of having a theme that goes through series um, that can permeate um, through different experiences that the characters are having. So that theme that I wrote ended up, oddly enough, it, like it worked, you know, obviously I would have to sort of contextualize it with with uh, with an orchestra and 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 orchestrate it accordingly, but it seemed to work in like really romantic moments. It seemed to work in even really dark moments, mysterious moments, um, and 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 so when I had that theme, I think it was the nature of the changes. Um, that melody, I sort of reharmonized with sort of a bunch of minor chords. Um, sometimes that minor, that same minor chord, we'd go from D minor to D major. Um, over the same change and that sort of would like feel slightly unsettled. Um, so for me, it came with melody first. Um, and, um, and I also had like wonderful sort of like orchestrating team. You know, you can't do this all by yourself. It's like a lot of work and it's, it's a heavy lifting show. And we had like, you know, this sometimes there's wall to wall score on the show. Um, and, um, but you know, some of the orchestrators um, that have worked on the show, um, um, there's one guy that, you know, did a lot of work with Wes Anderson and he's been wonderful helping me on the show. And, and so collectively we, we sort of, um, we sort of made this happen. Yeah. And uh, just to, this is us here. You're obviously already a three-time Emmy nominee for the show uh, for your music in, in different capacities. Emmy losing. Emmy losing. Emmy losing. And yeah. a three-time yeah. Emmy loser. Uh, but no. So going into the final season, you, how did you, like, what are the goals of the music? How do you approach, like, are you trying to do something new? Like, what was like, what was the idea, I guess? Um, this is us is, is a very sort of like special show. Um, it, it's it's close to my heart. Um, uh, you know, Dan Fogelman, who created the show, he and I have been friends since we were freshmen in college. So I've known him longer than I haven't. Um, and and that show is sort of like informed by his own tragedy that he experienced in his life when he, he's been open about how he lost his mom at a young age. And um, and so I've sort of seen Dan through some of these like ups and downs of his life. And so working on this show has been um, an incredibly, it's an incredible, incredible bonding experience for he and I, because in many ways I'm scoring for my friend as much as I am the characters on the screen. Um, and, and so there's a very sort of meta experience I have with that show. The show's about this larger connectivity of life. It's about these decisions we make um, that sometimes are seemingly benign, but then have these huge impacts on us and our future generations. 
Um, and so I, I brought in a lot of my own childhood. The score is really, really Indian. I mean, if like, if you're Indian and you hear that score, you're like, this makes me feel like old classical Hindi music. Um, there's all these sort of like, da, 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 na, 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 like these sort of like lines that I'm singing that feel um, like they could have come out of some old classical um, Indian song. And so for me to be able to use that sort of part of my childhood into the score and also write music for my friend and it be like on like a network television show, like for an NBC show um, is not something you get to do that often. Um, and, and Dan, and I, it's been such a creatively rewarding experience. Um, I actually like, I, I, I cried twice in my studio this week on like, I wrote the final cue and the, the, not the cue didn't make me cry. I don't want to be that sort of egotistical, but it was like, it was just, as I finished it, I was like, oh my gosh, like this show has done so much for my career. Uh, it's been such a wonderful experience. I'm never going to get to do this again. So yeah, well, anyway, the cue, I'm not going to cry again. So I'll stop. Well, the cue might not make you cry, but I guarantee you people who watch this as us will cry because of, of your music in those final <laughs> episodes. Uh, Siddhartha Kulsa, Kulsa, excuse me, the composer of Only Murders in the Building, which is on Hulu, and This Is Us on NBC. You can listen to the scores on Spotify and all streaming platforms. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks.